Hello and welcome to session 11 with Mrs. Kelly. Today we will talk about a much discussed topic and a topic of much concern, which is how to safely share classroom supplies during the COVID pandemic. It's very essential for us as educators, parents and teachers heading back in the fall for us to learn about how to sanitize and safely share classroom supplies during the COVID pandemic so that our children can learn safely and securely in our classrooms. The COVID pandemic is spread through contact and hence in our efforts to try and curb the pandemic, we must learn about how to share classroom supplies safely and how to sanitize them effectively so that children can use them because a lot of our math manipulatives are used continuously and come in contact with many little fingers. And hence it's important for us to create a plan as to how we can share those manipulatives without having so many people in contact with them. Sharing classroom supplies is a regular feature of most of our classrooms, but how will the global pandemic alter our practices? We will talk about some ideas as to how we can use our resources safely in the classroom, keeping in mind COVID and social distancing measures. Classrooms are going to look and function very differently for the foreseeable future. What we can do is reduce the risk of spread in our classrooms by taking all the precautions possible. So the first thing we can focus on is what can be shared reasonably. So many things in our classroom can be shared reasonably and on a regular basis, like scissors, pencils, pencil crayons, glue sticks, office type supplies like ink pads, paper, art and craft material, any uh, loose parts that you would buy from a dollar store. So these resources can be used regularly if you purchase them in bulk and you have little kits which you can create for each student and keep them in their cubby so that they can use those individual kits for their own learning. And so that eliminates contact and kind of helps with the stopping the spread of COVID. Some schools, of course, don't have the financial capacity to purchase things for every child. So you can reach out to a local business and ask them to help donate things which they don't require and could be of use for your classroom for free. Or you can ask parents and families coming to your classrooms for some donations. And a lot of parents are ever willing to donate materials and items to their children's classroom so that all the children can learn in a safe and secure environment. Some classroom items pose a greater sharing difficulty because most of us do not possess them in massive quantities in our classroom, but there are ways to work around them, which we will be talking about today. The first way to share is business as usual. So you can share your manipulatives easily between students through disinfectation of these manipulatives very thoroughly between uses. A fun way to disinfect your manipulatives and an easy way also to do it is to put your manipulatives into net bags and soak those bags in cleaning agent. So if you're interested in getting net bags, the dollar store sells them for a dollar each in sets of three in case you're looking. Cleaning agent protocols vary from school to school. So I would suggest that you check in with your school district and your administrative staff and your custodial staff before using any cleaning agent and find out what cleaning agent they would prefer being used within your premises. A challenge of this strategy is being decisive about how many times a day you would like to use those manipulatives because as many times you use those manipulatives, that many times you got to sanitize them. So that's where you need to think about it and figure out how many times a day do you want to use them so that you can also sanitize them properly and the kids also get to use them effectively. Add digital tools to your rotation. To stretch your supply and ease availability of manipulatives, you might like to use your current classroom tools and some online versions at the same time. So if you have less resources and you're unable to purchase resources, another great way to use resources and expand use of resources is to involve technology. So you can use a lot of uh, mathematical manipulatives available online. Like there are snap cubes online, there are linking uh, chains online, there are uh, shapes online for which you can do uh, shape diagrams. There are also all kinds of manipulatives online and so you can use those manipulatives on the iPads available if you have iPads and you can intersperse the iPads between kids who are not using the manipulatives available in the classroom. This will allow for more students to engage effectively without having to share limited resources. This is especially handy for math manipulatives, which is true because there are a lot of great websites with a lot of great math manipulatives like linking chains, snap cubes, uh, shapes to do all the shape tanagrams, 
uh, geo boards, which you can use to make shapes with elastic bands, and many others, which you can use. So, for example, if you have three kids using the geo boards, you can give the fourth or the fifth or the sixth an iPad with an electronic geo board open on a browser. That would be really handy for them to use, and it would also help them participate in learning. Individual manipulative kits. If you have enough supply of manipulatives for individual kits, then prepare individual kits. It's a great idea. Your kit could contain base 10 blocks, counters, parent blocks, linking cubes, dies, any other regular manipulatives that you have enough to divide off. You can store these personal kits in plastic bins from the dollar store or in labeled Ziploc bags, depending upon how much you are able to purchase and your financial capacity to purchase. Go 100% digital. If you have enough technology in your room, digital are, tools are a fabulous way to reduce risk of contamination. A keyboard or touch screen device is easily sanitized compared to manipulatives being used multiple times a day. If you do not have enough technology, you can intersperse the use of technology with items available in your classroom, giving a child or children chance to experience learning both online and offline. Another challenge of going 100% digital is that you will have to monitor the screen time children get because in Canada, as educators and parents, we are really concerned about the screen, amount of screen time a child or students get in a classroom and even at home. So we keep that in mind while using technology and going 100% technology. That could either be a challenge to you or it could be something that would be helpful to you because sometimes parents might be cooperative in terms of screen time. Or what you could do is break up the screen time with periods of outdoor learning or recess. So that would be good. Or you can take them down to the gym for some physical activity. So that kind of helps breaking up the screen time. Use printable versions. One final idea for using classroom manipulators safely is to give each student a printable paper alternative. While not the most environmental friendly option, we are dealing with rough times and we need to do everything we can to support the well-being of our students. So yes, giving them printed versions of their games or game boards, having multiple printed versions of a certain game that they love to play is very handy and it will also help reduce the chance of contact and the risk of COVID spreading due to contact. So that is really good. I know it's not the best option right now, considering our environment is also in danger of uh, dying out and getting affected due to global warming, but since we are in this COVID pandemic, maybe paper is our best solution if we have to limit screen time and we also have to uh, limit sharing of manipulatives at the same time. So hence, I think paper is also a great idea. You can also have many sheets of paper, one individual sheet of paper for each and every student, and you can give them individual packs of crayons or colored pencils and have them do their own drawing or writer's workshop if you're interested, or even math work. So that's great. Or you can even have a shake and spill sheet, individual ones for each kid and have them have a game of shake and spill with each other, which is great because it helps them learn maths and counting and subitizing and all those great math skills that they require in life. Thank you all for watching my video. If you liked it, please like, share and subscribe. Have a nice day.